folks. Welcome back to Issue Crew Movie Reviews. I know we went on a little bit of a weeb binge there, and I'm sorry for that. We're, we're here to bring you back to reality, okay? More Dragon Wheel coming soon, but for now, this is the plain old Issue Crew Movie Reviews with your host, Riley. You know him, you love him, and of course, wonderful co-host, his debut on our movie review program, Mr. Captain Blackbread. How are you today? Great, I think. Great, you think? Oh, yeah. Aside from not being able to find any of the recording equipment I was looking for uh, and my laptop just not lasting on battery power anymore, I I think I'm all right. Yeah. (laughs) Fun, annoying, technical difficulties. Captain Blackbread's here with a different mic, as usual. (laughs) He's got his rotation. But, folks, we're here to review a film. As the title Ishiku Movie Reviews would suggest, and this film was the, the 2023 Timothy Chalamet led Wonka film, the, the, the origin story of Willy Wonka. We, we see him. He, he travels into the, I don't remember what the place was called, but they sell chocolate there, the gallery something. And he goes there to sell oh, his man. special chocolates. Um, but the evil chocolate cartel that's running the town wants him out of there. So he gets, he gets caught up in a bunch of shenanigans. He ends up having to, uh, do laundry for an evil old woman who made them sign a contract to have a debt. And, you know, it's a big adventure and he meets, he meets some other people down there and they form a bond, particularly with a little girl named Noodle. Um, and together they must all band to allow Wonka to take down the, the chocolate cartel and be able to sell his chocolate to the masses. Now, I, I had a little bit of a preview of your feelings to this movie. You, you made them, you made them clear to me before I even watched the film. So Captain Blackbread, tell the audience, uh, general temperature, how did you feel about Wonka? How about Wonka? How did you feel? Oh, about shit. Well, I felt like it was overhyped, like really fucking overhyped by the critics, by people that would be like, well, I saw the trailer and it was bad. Oh, no, no, no. It, it, the movie was bad. It wasn't just I saw the trailer and actually it was really good. They all said, no, they're all fucking liars. Somebody was definitely paying them off because I only paid $6 to watch that movie and I felt like I was robbed. That that was like it's not even. I'm not just saying that because I like the 1970s, uh, wa- uh, you know, Willy Wonka better. Like I'm trying to keep the bias out of it. I tried as hard as I could, but that movie doesn't even stand on its own merit. It is absolute garbage, and uh, it was it was a tough one to get through. Okay, now I went into the movie with that already in mind. I had I had Captain Blackbreads. Uh, deep criticisms relate to me. Um, and you know, I kind of, I kind of, kind of procrastinated, you could say, on watching the film. We, had, we, we delayed the recordings a couple times because I would get too down to the wire and not be able to pull it off. Um, so here we are today and I watched the film this morning. And this is going to be an interesting show, Captain Blackbread. Cause I fucking loved this movie. What the fuck is wrong with you? You're jo- you're fucking, fucking me. Loved this movie. Holy fuck! Have you ever seen a good movie? <laughs> I loved this movie. How can you? What the hell? Time. I it was so whimsical and fun, and it was. I had a great time. I loved it. T- Timothy Chalamet owned the role. He was having a great time. The, the, the movie was got got some laughs out of me. Got some brought some tears to my eyes at times. Got the black bread. I think this movie is a masterpiece, and I'm not exaggerating or joking. This isn't a bit. No. Dude, no fucking way. That movie was just loads and loads of trash. Because when when I I don't think we were watching the same movie. Are you sure you didn't watch the '70s one? Because yeah, that, 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 I, that I one's amazing. Chalamet when I see him, I know that little man when I, when I lay my eyes upon him. You just have a hard on for Timothy Chalamet. Is that what's happening here? No, I, 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 he's just a very recognizable character in pop culture now for whatever reason. And he happened to do pretty good in this movie. 
I didn't have, okay, so that's another thing I should probably bring up. I had no problems with the acting. I thought the acting was totally fine. Like, those people could definitely act out a better story, but uh, from what I heard, because I was looking into it, as to, like, how this movie was so bad, uh, and that was that they didn't really, the, the director didn't make it as something that he wanted to do. It wasn't like a passion project for him. He did it to try and make other people like it and uh, instead alienated like half the people. Like the real Rotten Tomatoes score would probably be like 58%. I mean, if I was to rate it myself, ah, if I was to rate it myself, I would give it like a a good old 28. The funniest part of the movie. Damn it, you spoiled your thoughts. I did? Well, that's fine. I can I can keep this going. I could fucking I can jabber on about this fucking movie later. Just bleep yeah, it out. I, I, I've want. heard that maybe. It doesn't really matter. I just the format of the show that I always forget to brief everybody on before we do it is that uh we yeah, we have a reformed conversation as the, about the film as we are now, and then at the end we cap it off with our wrap up questions, uh which is uh your favorite character, your favorite scene and a rating out of ten. Yeah, uh my issue with it is uh like just as the you know just as the director tried to make it for both kids and adults like it could be a kids movie it could even be an adults movie but they tried to both and they failed in my humble factual opinion <laughs> i just i, I don't know. know i don't think we watched the same movie i'm i'm still convinced i i have a history of being too nice but like with this one, with this one, it's not even like, yeah, you know, I had a, like, it's like, this is not an American Psycho 2 situation. That's, that's one of my insane, more insane episodes of this podcast where I was like, yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed it. It's not even that. I think this movie was unironically amazing. And I don't know what I'm missing that makes it so bad. Um, I thought it was, I, I enjoyed the story. I think the feel was very whimsical. Um, I think a lot of the shots uh, were very nice. I really liked the whole vibe of the film. I think it was directed beautifully. Um, I'm a sucker for musicals, so that probably helps. And I was I was a fan of the fact that it was a musical. I wasn't expecting that. I haven't seen the other Willy Wonka movies, and I don't know if they're musical or not. I have seen them, actually, but it's been many, many, many years. Watch the 70s one. They don't compare, but I was doing my best to not have a bias about that. I... Because uh, the thing was, after this film's release, they were saying this was the origin story. And then later on, they were saying they're actually not even set in the same universe. So it's really just a standalone thing. So, I don't know. I don't know what the hell happened. Like, I I guess they tried to do something that was great for the kids, but also great for the adults. So, all the adult kids out there, this is for you this movie and if you like high school musical then you'll fucking love this one because every little thing that happens they have to sing a fucking song about it and we went 10 minutes and there were already two songs a few minutes later another fucking song comes on i think this movie had like 20 songs it it was like only songs shit i am it's not only that i brought it home you know to watch it my fiance was checking some of it out, and she was just rolling her eyes the whole time. So, I mean, it's not just me. And you can tell, like, go into any fucking uh, video where people are talking about this Wonka movie, it is a good half of the people on the comments saying that it is garbage, and another half of the people being like, it was amazing! And then, like, once in a while, you get the oddball comment saying, it was all right. So, really, people are torn on this movie. Yeah, it's it's interesting to hear hear all those perspectives. I actually I had a brief conversation uh, with my friend Crow Royalty, disgraced ex co host of the Issue Crew, Crow Royalty, um, earlier about this film, and they they landed somewhere in the middle. So I've heard I've heard the other two perspectives, and I have my own perspective, which I'm one of the I think it's amazing guys. I just I I can't I, name a flaw. I think your issue is that you are just a sucker for musicals and because it's a musical you're willing to look past all the other trash i'm a sucker for musicals and i'm a sucker for like whimsy and fun 
And I think this movie had that in spades. Oh, I, hee hee, this garbage is singing. Yeah, this is very whimsical. There was some funny in there, too. The Oompa Loompa, he was a funny guy. Liked that uh, guy. Yeah, the the Oompa Loompa just kind of felt shoehorned into the story, in my opinion. He was just there. He's like, yep, yeah, people will find this guy funny. Like, you could tell that there were elements put in there to appeal to people like you. I'm yes. I'm not that people, so when I see that, I'm just like, wow, pandering. Yeah, that's the that's the differing perspectives. I I am like the most positive man on the planet. I don't know what it is about me. Sometimes I'll hate things and I'll really hate them, but like I watch a lot of things that people hate, and I'm like, I don't know, man, it's just fun. And sometimes I'll watch something that a lot of people hate, and I'll be like, this is the best thing I've ever seen. What are you fucking people talking about? And this is one of those times. What is I your was... opinion on The Room? I've never seen it. Oh. Okay, Should we do well, that one next? That. Oh, God. Well, I mean, I've seen The Room, so I wouldn't have to watch it again. You, you gotta but, watch um... it again. That's the rule. You gotta have it fresh on the mind, Captain Blackbread. I always have the room fresh on the mind. That's fair. Maybe you've memorized the whole thing. I wouldn't doubt it. You have to, yeah, you you have to, ha- you have to be wearing Tommy Wiseau's underwear. That's the that's the only thing about it. <laughs> you can actually that, buy them from his website. Experience. <clears throat> yeah. You'd have the full Tommy Wiseau underwear. The room experience. That'd be pretty good. Uh, people have done it. <laughs> there's there's an option where you can get a bundle where you get the movie and you get the underwear. That's awesome. That's really funny. Yeah. I don't but know. That was I... an experience that felt more worth it to me. Like I had much more fun watching the room and laughing at it. Yeah, I've heard I've heard that, that one is a very ironic experience. Which I can I can get into that too. So I've I've always been interested in that one, but I've just never pulled the trigger. It's one of those experiences where, like, I've heard about it enough that my brain, like, files it to the back. And it's like, I I don't want to experience this right now. We'll save this for a rainy day. (laughs) It's worthwhile. Like, it's, you know, so bad it's good. And so bad that uh, Tommy changed his position on what the movie was uh, supposed to be. And he just oh, yeah, called it he, a black like, comedy. He started coping and saying that it was a joke the whole time. Yeah. He didn't That's say it was a dark comedy either. He said it was a black comedy, like Catch the Room on BET. <laughs> Fucking Medea. <Yeah. laughs> so that's a black comedy. Yeah, isn't that isn't that how that works? Or is there actually a genre of black comedy that's not like Black no, I'm pretty. Quotation. I'm pretty sure it actually is. I don't. I think it's kind of a term people don't really use anymore. I think people have kind of just quietly substituted out, d- substituted it with dark comedy. Um, but I'm pretty sure the genre is like officially called in a lot of circles black comedy. I think that is correct. Because uh, I don't know. So that so then what is it called when it's like when it's like all black people? What, what is that's what just a comedy, you racist. <laughs> well, well, no, but like they make it, you know they do that on purpose. I'm not saying like they're not they're all black. They're not tokening at this point. But you know what they call that? Uh, directed by Tyler Perry, I believe is the term. No, there's got to be a word for it. Are we? Are we just not supposed to have a word for it? I'm, yeah, I'm actually the bad guy. Yeah, the, the word for it is actually the N word, so only they could say it. Oh shit! It's N word comedy. So, N word comedy. <laughs> no, they, that strictly came from the twenties. <laughs> anyway, God. we gotta no, we gotta that... review another black movie on this channel. Me and Kathy did a what? What the fuck was it called? It was not a comedy. Shit! I thought I had it and I lost it. It had like it had like Juan Carlo Esposito and like same. It had a lot of like famous black guys in it. I, I'm gonna have to look it up, so I'll do that passively as we discuss Wonka a little more. <laughs> Enough about brown people. Back to the chocolate. <laughs> it was Gospel Hill was the name of the movie. I just remembered it. 
That sounds like the name of it for sure. Yeah, it was Gospel Hill. It was about like a church town and there was corruption. It was it was pretty good. I'm pretty sure Juan Carlos Esposito directed it. That's why we picked it. We were intrigued by that because you were Breaking Bad fans. And it was <laughs> it was the first like black movie that I've sat my white ass down and listened to, really. <laughs> Like you haven't sat down and watched Big Mama's House or, no, or I've like uh, caught them Diary on TV of a, a little bit. Plenty of good ones. The whole one. I've not seen a yeah. whole Medea film. Nazi? Jesus Christ! There's the problem. Ah, hey. Pretty good. Anyway, pretty good. um, yeah. When it just a short little bit on that, like a couple of Medea movies are fine. But then they they just kept going and going and and, and it just, they don't get better. It only gets worse. Yeah, I've heard. So I've heard. Yes, black people movies can be good too. You heard it here first, guys. Insane, crazy. I know, right? It ended racism. <laughs> racism is over. This movie have any black people in it? I don't think so. Or no, it had like two. Wait, what? Yeah, I did. No, uh, you know that's really <laughs> fucking weird. Only I did. More. I, I did go on a trip through the comments for a little while, and once in a while there would just be like, because I didn't say anything about there being black people too many or too little or whatever. I don't give a shit about that. I don't think most people do. No, but there were the odd, there were the odd amount of comments, like oddly more than there should be of people being like there's too many black people in this movie. There's only like three uh, and Just, there's like I know <laughs> ten these fucking characters. people are unhinged. <laughs> it's like holy shit you are just washed up in your own politics. Just it's fucking just, enjoy the movie. If the acting is no- good then the acting is good. It's Noodle, the villain guy whose name I don't remember and uh, Noodle's Slugworth. Mom. That's it. Slugworth, yes. Noodle, Slugworth, and Noodle's mom. Those were the only ones. Yeah. My, uh, oh, that reminds me, actually, uh, yeah. not black people, but, um, <laughs> uh, when, uh, when people are saying this is the origin story, right? Uh, if it wasn't set in a separate universe, that does mean that, actually, it was black people, that, um, <laughs> Slugworth ha- went from black to white canonically. Wow, I didn't know Slugworth so, was in the first one. Well, he ha- yeah, they, he was like the one guy. He, he also turned out to be Mr. Wilkinson, who just worked for uh, Willy Wonka to just, you know, weed out the bad ones. I'll be you honest. Because he very, bribes them with money to honest, like, take the job. It's very possible that I have not seen that one. I know I've seen the Depp one. Uh, I think I've seen the seventies one, but if I did, I was like a little kid. Oh, dude, it's it's such a magical experience. It's you you should just watch it anyway. I should. I only I only watch movies to review them though, but I'll I'll review that one too. We'll review all the Wonka movies. You don't have to review all of them. I could get somebody else if you want, but we're gonna review I have all them of them. All. It's fine. I, well, Let's I don't go. have all of them. I guess I. I've watched this one. I'll never watch it again. And we're doing all subsections now. This is subsection The Wonka Boys. It's only three episodes shit. long. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, let's see here. Right. Um. Yeah. There. Were, see, I, I already mentioned the unhinged comments. Um, That's so insane. If there's any, if there's any black people in a movie, fucking uh, the quartering has to have a fucking flip top, and all of his buddies, and all the fucking internet weirdos. It's too woke. Go woke. Go broke. Um, I don't know. I I can I can see sometimes where that happens, but I mean, I'm happened. The whole point is like if people are doing that and you're noticing it then you are actually the problem because you're watching the movie. So if if you think that that's an issue, don't watch the movie. But if it's, if it's not, then, you know, then ignore it. Then they'll stop doing it. But I think that if you think that black actors can't have a chance, then, you know, go fuck yourself. That's as simple as that. 
Yeah, it's real weird. The internet's a Yeah, real they weird aren't just place. all stuck on BET. <laughs> I remember BET. Man, cable was a trip. I remember those times. All right. Do you still have cable, Captain Blackbread? Uh, no, but I have been thinking about whether or not I should just go back to it because having too many uh, streaming services is kind of just too expensive. I've been buying movies. I uh, also have just started collecting VHSs. Isn't cable so, like kind of ridiculously expensive though? Like I feel like streaming services are still cheaper, if not by as much as they used to be. I don't know because I haven't looked into that. I don't think I've had. God, I haven't had cable. cable since I think I was a is kid. like, yeah, I haven't had cable since I was young. So maybe I'm just remembering the prices wrong. But I feel like cable is like fucking, fucking eighty bucks. Uh, they usually bundled it with internet and stuff. Yeah, maybe. I feel like I had something really important to say about the Wonka movie. <laughs> You're forgetting about it, but actively as we speak, it bored you. Yeah, so. it's it's leaving my head. I'd like to shout out uh, the the love story. I don't rem- I don't remember their names, but the uh, the, secu- the security guard for the zoo and that other cop chick. <laughs> oh my God! There's a good bit that I'm going to send at you. Because there, yeah. there were moments in the movie where I would, it, it'd be dumb to kind of, to try and explain it, but if I sent them to you, do you think you could insert them into this part right here? That's that's not something we do here. Come on, Dad. <laughs> if you send it to me, I'll do it. Uh, the, what are they? What do you mean? We can just talk about them. That's what we're here for. Oh, it's going to be so fucking dumb. The most fun I had with this movie was sitting down at the at, after my work day. Like I started it at work. Mm-hmm. I had to pause it for a little bit because I just couldn't consume that much garbage at once. Yeah. I didn't so have to walk then, away from this once, by the way. And I'm usually Oh, yeah, no, like it was too much movie. for me for a lot of a lot of points. So Last I brought it home. He was Merry Christmas, Drake and Josh. And I love Drake and Josh. And it took me two sit downs to watch that. So. Wonka's Wonka's got points. I guess. I'm telling you, if you even have the original to compare it to, you're you might change your mind. Or maybe you'll change your mind that, you know, it it's good as a standalone movie and I just I could not enjoy it. But when I when I brought it home, I tried to watch a little bit as I was cooking and it, I could I, ten minutes went by and there were like three songs. And I was like, God damn. And I hear another song start, and I'm like, oh, fuck. So that's a big turnoff for me. Is like, I can handle a musical. You know, I have to sit and wait through the song so something actually happens. And then uh, we started watching the movie in the living room, my fiance and I. And the funnest part of the movie was me just pretending to laugh at it. And I just had, I, I had her make a couple of recordings of moments where they're just like, "This is a funny part of the movie. You're supposed to laugh at this." <laughs> and I was just like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> the, uh, "The bit was there. There was this video somebody released not too long ago." I mean, it's ancient history and in, in memes at the moment. In but internet time, yeah. Yeah. Um, where somebody took the... Somebody made a YTP out of the um, out of that moment in Toy Story where Woody's like, Buzz, look an alien. Yeah. And they just, like, extended the laugh and just did all sorts of fucking crazy shit with it. And I was just, I was just rolling a bit on that. That's good. <laughs> I, I I remember that laugh too. That's that's a good bit to be doing. I don't know. I thought the jokes were good though. I didn't have to mock them with 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 silly laughter. What? It, I don't know. I don't know, Riley. Maybe I'm just smarter than you are, and this is the problem. He didn't know how to because read. smart people Almost like to tell you how smart like they it. are. That's that's true. If there's one true thing in this world, it's that. Uh, but yeah, I thought this movie was a lot of fun. I thought the I thought the relationship between uh, Wonka and Noodle and them finding uh, relatable experience. Finding out that Wonka was a pedophile. Yeah, that was a weird part of the movie, yeah, wasn't that's it? That's not. 
That's rude to say. That's not what was going on. Come on now. Yeah, you're right. Wonka hates kids. <laughs> That's true. He does murder a lot of them, I hear. Yeah, when he said burn in hell, Noodle, and he killed her at the end, that was really strange. Oh, yeah, yeah that was weird. He had, he had yet the movie to was bad, his, but that was my favorite part. He had yet to develop his, his signature more uh, sophisticated murder methods, so he just kind of bludgeoned her. It was pretty rough. Yeah. Okay, but on a more serious note, um, there was uh, there was a part in that movie that really like threw me off. I'm just like, that's so fucking weird. Because they started singing a song, they started building up his shop, his own shop, and the other chocolate people were like and, and that's not a reference to the fact that slugworth is black but the other chocolate people in the in the area were trying to like take <laughs> him down and uh Continue. yeah they like destroyed his shop by like making his chocolates do weird shit and by the way his uh like the made up ingredients in this movie kind of threw me off because like once in a while, there's nods to the original movie that just feels so fucking fake. And, uh, like, in genuine, like, they're just thrown in there. They knew. They knew that we would be enjoying that. If we enjoyed it. If we didn't know, it was just being handed directly fucking to us. Hey, you see, maybe that's, that's like a cheapness that I didn't notice because I have little experience with the old movie. I just, like, I experienced those things for pretty much the first time, and it was like, oh, how whimsical. Um, I, I, yeah. I didn't notice all the heavy-handed references that I don't get. Yeah, those were pretty annoying. So, like, there was a point in that movie where they sing a song, they're building up a shop, they find a way to, like, destroy his customer base. One of them, like, throws a fucking candle or a bomb or something. I don't fucking remember. I, I really somehow I've forgotten, but all this happens. He was so happy about his shop being built up. And then noodles, like after the shop is like destroyed and fucked up noodles, just like, well, we could just start from the beginning. And then he's just like, no, we can't. We just can't I'm like, fuck. Why are you giving up? He's like, My he was so optimistic a minute ago. Yeah. He was so optimistic a minute ago. And now he's just like, I can't, I give up. Fuck this thing. Well, that was his. That was his moment of doubt. You know, the hero has to have his moment of doubt before his, you know, final call to action, where he, his mother doesn't come back to him as he always dreamed she would be, as she would. So, uh, he, he gives up. He doesn't think he can do it. Um, and then you know, when presented with the opportunity to give Noodle a better life, give all of his friends a better life, and all he has to do is give up this dream, he was kind of on the verge of giving up anyway. He does it. Uh, uh, he was full of optimism at the very beginning. Like, he, full he of optimism. Yeah, and, and then, then he goes, now it's and just he goes all through gone. these deep experiences, and then it kind of knocks the wind out of his sails. He had, a lot of, he had a lot of lofty hopes, and when they weren't met, as he always dreamed, that, that the, the, people come into things, like, too optimistic, and then it doesn't go as they plan, and it can kind of... It can kind of disillusion them. It's a realistic experience that they're betraying in this movie. I don't know. I'd be more worried about, no, we got to build it back. I don't give up until all the fucking auto parts uh, stores are closed and I got everything taken apart. That's when I'm just like, wow, fuck this. Oops. But I know at least <laughs> by like the morning I can go game. back and finish the job. Yeah. Also, lads, gentle gents, have two cars. So if you have to repair something and take it apart, you're not just stuck there, because that is absolutely the worst thing. There's there's room for error if you have two cars, because you can always drive the other one. Even if it's a gas-guzzling big old piece of shit, at least you can drive somewhere. Anyway, that's the biggest lesson I got out of the Wonka movie. How <laughs> about you? Uh, well, I learned that, you know, follow your dreams, because you never know what might happen. And that's, right. the, that's the bottom line. Right. You make your floating chocolates and sell them to people. Uh, you know, a world that was previously somewhat based in reality. Now we don't give a shit about that. We're just going to give them floating fucking chocolates. Yeah, why not? It's fun. 
because uh, it's no longer based in any kind of reality, makes him less like an inventor and more of a fucking wizard than he has ever been. Uh, when Captain Bla- Blackbread is saying this, he definitely he has a monocle, a top hat, uh, a pipe in his mouth. Uh, he's got uh, he's got a spot of tea, um, and he's got all of his uh, acc- all of his academic accolades hang above his wall uh, above him on on this wall in frames. <laughs> all of my Reddit updates. You know, all your Reddit upvotes and frames and hung on the walls. <laughs> yeah, let, let me let me point something else out. The way I look, everybody thinks I'm like big on Reddit. I'm never on Reddit. Like the only thing I ever hop on Reddit for is sometimes there's good porn there. That's it. Yes, that's that was that used to be my primary use for Reddit. Now I'm kind of like now I'm kind of using. Why do you still have access to this chat instead of being? <laughs> Uh, com slash at Sonic the Centipede and watch my newest video. Thank you. Bye. Hell yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Centipede, <laughs> who still has access to this chat, I guess. Well, that was cool. Um, <laughs> I've only had kidding. one interaction with the Centipede, and the Centipede told me that, that uh, they were gay. <laughs> like, I never asked, but this like is the fine. Private conversation. She was just like, no, oh, no, no. Okay. It was, it was, uh, no, it was on the issue crew chat. Oh, okay, where I was just listening in on the show. Oh yeah, you were just listening in that episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, unprovoked. Uh, I, I was, I was told that they were gay. That's cool. I'm almost married. <laughs> well, that's nice. Anyway. Uh, it is it is the month to be gay, by the way. Happy Pride That's Month, true. everybody. Everybody's gay on Pride Month. Everybody's got That's a little right. bit of gay. It's also apparently the month to, to be an ant, because get the fuck out of my house. I hate... I don't even know what to do about this, man. There's too many ants in your house? Too many fucking ants. I don't... They're not even... There's, they're not even eating anything. They're just wandering. They're not after anything. There's even too much chocolate around. That's right. Uh, the Wonka movie left my house too sweet. Yeah, exactly. Bro, can you imagine drowning in chocolate? What a what a briefly enjoyable way to die terribly. Oh yeah, I laughed at that part. <laughs> so I'd take a deep breath, and I was like, ah, ha, ha. <laughs> Oh, by the way, vinegar, good ant repellent. Oh, real? Yep. Nice. I didn't Just know that. don't leave any like. Sugar ants are just kind of a nuisance. They don't actually do anything. Except your cats can eat them and get worms. Ew. So, yeah. Anyway, back to Wonka. Wonka. Uh, was there any other general conversation we wanted to have before we went to our wrap-up questions? Uh, well, I'm not going to lie. I wanted the Wonka movie to be good. I wanted, to, I wanted it to be a situation in which I was, you know, led in the wrong direction by the trailer, and the movie turned out to be good, but I, I was sorely disappointed, and I did my best to keep my biases out of the uh, out of the picture. Whether or not they rose up and, you know, were part of it anyway, I guess is up to the viewers, but, yeah, I, I couldn't do it. You know, I'm thinking. I'm thinking it might be a lot more musicals than I thought because I'm thinking about other unpopular movie opinions I've had. Um, and I remember a movie I really liked that everyone else was like, "This is terrible. Why did they make this?" Um, was the West Side Story movie that came out in like 2021? I think I really liked that movie. So I think I'm just predisposed <laughs> to the genre. It, that might be the case, but um, I thought this movie was really fun. I thought it was shot really well. I thought it was acted really well. I thought the Relationships between the characters were sweet and genuine. I I enjoyed Wonka as a protagonist. Um, I I always love the the plucky idiot protagonist, and Wonka Wonka plays that role in Spades. Um, <laughs> got the little girl teaching him how to read and shit. Uh, but he's 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 making the chocolate like a wizard, and we love him for it. That Wonka. I'm, I, I was a big fan of this movie. I don't know. You're the- <laughs> Riley, I I do have one more question actually concerning the movie. There was sure. a part with the whole giraffe thing, and it's not out of it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for uh Wonka to milk a giraffe for chocolate. However, 
I'd like to know. Oh God, that's just a, there's so much stuff I hate about this movie. I hate the stupid chocolate that they eat it and they get drunk and they go through all sorts of different drunks. That's fun. But anyway, no, that's so dumb. Really, they, you could just do that. No, that's that's Wonka being a wizard. Now, anyway, I really uh, like the you... last layer is roasted pork for the back of the fridge or whatever. That was that was a good punchline. That's the final thing before you fall asleep is like the terrible leftovers from the back of the fridge. Oh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess. I just don't. Joke. I just. I don't. I don't know. I, I must have missed that part because I, I was like, oh, wow, they get drunk off of the one chocolate. Very fucking funny. He was explaining like how it was like a layered candy. He's like, this layer is the champagne, whatever. And this is the yeah. white wine. This is the red wine. This is where it gets a little emotional. It's where we hit the, the whiskey nougat or whatever the fuck he was saying. And then there's That was the- a reference to the goddamn candy, the, the gum that turns you into a blueberry. It was a five-course meal, right? And the, fi- uh, and the final layer is roasted pork from the back of the fridge to symbolize the eating leftovers like a zombie when you're drunk before you go to sleep. Yeah, and it's oddly, it's odd enough that they didn't turn into roasted pork from the back of the fridge in this one. I guess he had it all figured out back then and forgot how to fucking do it. So now they turn into fucking blueberries. Yeah, shit. He, he was, he's getting senile in that movie, I think. Maybe that's why he's looking for a replacement. He's not even old in that movie. He's like 40. Yeah, that's fucking old as hell. <laughs> Shit. Now, did you think that the giraffe bit was funny? The giraffe coming back and attacking the the, I the bat gi- again or whatever. I, I thought the original. I thought the initial bit of like, ah, oh, it's funny that they're milking a giraffe was kind of silly. Um, then the giraffe came back and I was like, hell yeah, <laughs> hero. I I thought the opposite. I was fine with the milking a giraffe at first. Because that's something that Wonka would do. But then when the giraffe attacks the vat again, I'm just like, this is so fucking stupid. I hate this. Because he wants the mint. I couldn't even enjoy it. So, yet again, I made another bit where I mocked that. So, that's how I felt about it. So, you did you did think the fucking giraffe attacking the vat again. We're not gonna come to uh, we're not gonna come to an agreement on this movie. It just it's I not love, gonna happen now. I love fucking Mr. Bean being the priest. It's so great. That every scene with fucking Mr. Bean is, is very good. I mean, I like Rowan Atkinson as much as the next guy, but um, I I don't I don't see the significance of him being a priest. He's just a he's just a silly little guy. Although it is an ironic uh, position for him to take. If you're, ah, oh, never mind. Don't worry about it. Oh, is there something about this guy I don't know? Oh well, I'm pretty sure he's pretty anti-religious, but I might, I might have my wires crossed, so I don't want to say that for sure. I mean, I'm pretty anti-religious. <laughs> That's yeah, a lie. Well, oh well, well, I think it's simple enough. If there's a god, then he doesn't. We're like ants, and just like me, getting rid of the ants that I keep seeing. I know know that they're not worshipping me, and they're just like, he's blessing us with all of this food. Maybe, exactly. Take some of the blessings back to the hive. You're you're a god to hit them, but... uh... Yeah, they they have a shrine inside of their anthill dedicated to me, and they all pray to it, and I have no idea, and I'm just smiting them one by one. Yeah, I just, I can't bring myself to buy the text of the Bible, but part of me, part of me intrinsically believes there has to be some sort of god. Because I don't think that all of this could have happened by accident. That's like my weird fucking woman position on the whole thing. Um, but logically, I don't identify with any of the existing religions that I've researched. It, yeah, easily. It's a. It's all just a coping mechanism because we have no idea yeah, what the, to do. Whether there's a heaven or hell, you know, it's just all cope. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find yep. out when the time is right. I guess so. Anyway, enough about mortality. How about Wonka, huh? <laughs> yeah. Wonka? Oh, it made me want to find out if there was a heaven or a hell. <laughs> so, uh, fucking take me away in a pool of chocolate. Yep. Yeah. So I'd say for me, easy 28%. Uh, I wish it would have been better. I, I seriously do. I, uh, I think they could have done better. 
I, I think they were just trying a little too hard with the concepts that they had available to them. And I think the black tried. people were fine. <laughs> and I think they <laughs> I have to make that clear. There's so many people with the opinion of the movie is bad that said too many black people. I really have to, I really have to separate not myself me. from I'm them. Not with those guys. Yeah, I disavow entirely. Uh, but I think they tried just hard enough, folks. And with that, I think we can get into our wrap up questions. So, so Captain Blackbread, who, which, which of these characters made it to, into your heart a little more than the rest in this movie that you apparently despise? Who was your favorite character in the film? Uh. Noodle was actually my favorite character in the movie. Hell yeah, that's a good pick. Kind of carried it a little better. If it was if it was one or the other, it wouldn't have worked. But the two of them were, uh, well, they 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 worked together as a a good team, you know. And I'll and I'll give it that. They they yeah. did try. If if it was, if the director had it any other way, the movie would. Uh, well, it was already a drag for me. I think it's, you know what? If there was less music, I might have been okay with the film and been like, that was all right. It's all right. I wouldn't have, didn't like paying money for it. But you know what? I've had worse experiences. However, well, I don't, I don't know if I'm supposed to get to this point yet. But, um, yeah, 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 yeah. it, yeah, this, I wish it was better. I really do. But it was My- not. My favorite character. I'll give it to Wonka. I was a I was a fan of Wonka. Good protagonist, uh, and I, I think that them as a duo worked really well too. And I try to pick differently from my co-host when possible, so you know it works there. The synergy. I'm a fan of Wonka. Thought thought old Timmy boy did a good job. Um, so I'll give it that nod. Uh, favorite scene, Captain Blackbread. What are you thinking? Oh no. A little bit of a brain teaser here. Oh, shit. Oh, that's a tough one. Jesus Christ, I hated, like, all of it. Uh, I'll, I'll give my answer first. Um, it's it's corny, and it's, and it's like, you know, too fucking sweet and sappy for most. Um, but I'm giving it to the musical number immediately post-giraffe milking. Uh, where, where Wonka finally figures out words that rhyme with noodle, and they do a whole song about it. And they dance on the rooftops. It was cute. It was fun. Art, I'm gonna have to plagiarize from you, and I'll have to say the same thing almost, except it wasn't cute or fun. Uh, I mean, <laughs> why was it your favorite? Scene? That was fine. How was it my favorite scene? It's my least hated scene. It's your least, my not- least hated musical number, because <laughs> at least they were trying something. They're they're being a little creative with it, which is more than I can say about the rest of the film, where. Like it, it did genuinely feel a little bit too sanitized at times. Like they wanted to be a little safe about it. Cause when it comes down to it, and I should have said this earlier, but I always come up with the good stuff at the end of shit like this <laughs> is that Wonka is supposed to be a very uh, self centered and also not very well um, socialized. So that's why he is the way he is in the older movies. And, and a good example of that, the closest example to how the book was would be the 2005 release, Charlie and the chocolate factory, you know, the Tim Burton, the Johnny Depp one. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was really weird, but it was the closest representation we had to the actual book. So, you know, what that means is that the book was kind of not so great. Probably, so I'll have yeah, to that's read the it. One and I find remember. Out. That's why I remember Willy Wonka being a fucking serial killer. <laughs> oh, it's it's much more entertaining in the old one, not the Tim Burton one. The Tim Burton one was weird, and everybody thought it was weird. But apparently, that's the best representation of the book that we have. So, as far as accuracy, that's the one. So I'll have to rewatch that one, and maybe I'll. Gain an appreciation for it, or I'll gain an appreciation for this new Wonka movie. But should review right them now, in I don't have reverse it. order. We'll do we'll do the Tim Burton one next, and then we'll do the. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, you're right. We'll save the best for last. There you go. All but right. I'm rating it out of ten. So just a, the you said twenty eight a couple times. So just uh how this rating system works is we rate it out of ten 
we don't go crazy with the decimals. It's either 0.5 or even. So I guess the closest for you would be 2.5 would be the most accurate. Would you agree? Yep. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem putting it on the lower end of that. Yeah, two uh, and a half out of ten. Two and a half out of ten. Uh, for me, uh, I'm not even lying to you. This is one of my new favorite films. This is a ten out of ten film. I'm sorry. I, I have to speak my truth. I have, it's going to age so poorly when you true. see the other movies. <laughs> maybe. Maybe you're right. But I thought this was excellent. And I was I was thoroughly charmed throughout. It was a great experience. About your musical tastes, should you ever start a musical? You know what? If if on this network you start a music uh, music podcast, let me host it so I can give other people shit about their musical taste because mine is just objectively the best. I don't mind there being like insulary podcasts held by other issue crew members on the channel. You should start a music podcast and we'll upload it to the issue crew channel. That'd be badass. Hell yeah, yeah. I, I do want to do more shit like that for the issue crew. I hope, I hope with this new life that's breathed in, we're gonna do some more fun shit. Uh, because the issue crew, we had a lot of big lofty plans in the beginning, and then we kind of just like settled into the normal podcast schedule and never went out of our way to do anything cool or different. <laughs> yeah. So I want to try. I wouldn't know. I'm too new. You're too, yeah, you're too new, but but the fact that we have new blood in here means it's time to get things moving and shaking. It's time to make the issue crew uh, an empire that we can all stand upon. That's that's the plan. We're we're, we're going to rule the world someday. You and me and those five other chuckle fucks. <laughs> we're we're running this shit. Oh. And we're going to we're going to charm the whole world just like Willy Wonka did in this movie. And that's it. That's the end of the show. That's a black cool. Where can our listeners find you on the internet? You can find me on my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Captain Blackbread. That is black bread, not black beard. And if you can't find it that way for some reason, you can go ahead and search Your Bluff Crisis Passing because we haven't released any other music lately. Do, and sometimes I upload things, but not very often anymore, because I'm a big boy with a big boy job. Ah, uh, yeah, that'll that'll do that. But folks, you can, of course, find me at linktr.ee slash Riley Cinematic Universe. That's R-I-E-L-Y Cinematic Universe. Um, it's got all sorts of links and stuff and things to all sorts of things that I do, podcasts, like this one and many others, because I just do them all the time forever. Um, and you can find those social media, although I'm currently off Twitter. I've had a couple of brief relapses. Yeah, young Clippa got arrested. Free Young Clippa. So I had to see some of the tweets about that. Uh, but I've been mostly on Who's on Clippo? For like a week. A.C. Riley. He got arrested. Wait, what? From the Dick Show. No shit. Yeah, he got arrested for fucking stalking Eric July. You what? No yeah. fucking way. What what did it. he do this time? Like what he went, did he, he do just, anything different or was it just him being at that location? Yeah, he just went to a meetup that Eric July was hosting and handed out copies of ISOM and bunny stickers. And I guess Eric called the cops and they took him. Uh I don't think anything's going to come of this. It's no, but he's unfortunate in jail that he's right in now. jail for that. He's, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think he should be in jail for that. For somebody yeah. who's on a network that promotes freedom and shit, this is freedom of speech. And what is the issue? Did he? Did he? Did he have like some sort of uh, like uh, what do you call it? What's the thing you give to people that makes them stay away from you, or at least is supposed to? Restraining order? No, I did not yeah. think there were any restraining orders in place. Then this is bullshit. How can they put him in jail for that? I have no idea. We're going to have to hear more in the story as it develops, but I just know it happened. They were on live stream at the time. Uh, we, you can watch Riley get arrested in real time. It's, well, it's wild. You know what this means, right? What? You are the main Riley right now. You are That's Riley true. 1. I'm Riley 1. <laughs> the other Riley is out of the game right now. So I'm briefly. The first Riley, but by the time this podcast is out, that probably won't be the case, because he's not going to be in jail for more than a couple days, I'm sure. 
<laughs> got to get on the dick show as soon as you can and gloat. Yeah. You, you have to. The other Riley went down. I am the victor. Yeah. It's time it for Ascension, baby. Actually. This is this is it. We're heading to the stars, man. <laughs> this is our opportunity. When the world needs a Riley, <laughs> I'm ready to answer. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. All right, catch y'all later.